Hello there, EJ here. Welcome. Today is a great day to grab your bath towel, some soap, and your rubber ducky. You're going to be taking a long, hot bath to decide why water is wet. Then let me know what you come up with, okay? Too difficult of a question? How about you just contemplate your wrinkly fingers and toes then? What's going on there? Well, you might be surprised to know that's a pretty difficult question to answer too. But since the water's warm and we've got some time, let's investigate. Been in the water for more than five minutes? Then take a good look at your fingertips. It's likely they've been wrinkled up and are looking pretty strange. Now check out your toes. I bet they're the same. Why does this wrinkling happen? Does it have a purpose? These are questions that actually have puzzled scientists for quite a while. For a very long time, they thought the answer was simply our skin was soaking up water and expanding. But that's not really what the latest research shows. In fact, if you look up the question of wrinkly fingers and toes online, you're going to find a lot of different answers. And there's new answers being offered all the time. Let's start with something we know for sure. And that is your skin has three main layers, the subcutaneous layer, the dermis, and the epidermis. The subcutaneous layer of your skin is the deepest layer, holding crushy fat cells and connective tissue. Its most important job is to insulate and protect your insides. The next layer up is the dermis, which is home for your blood vessels, nerve endings, hair follicles, and different tiny glands. It's a busy place sending messages to our brain and producing hair, oil, and sweat. Finally, there's the topmost layer, your epidermis. This is the layer of your skin on your body that you can see and feel. It protects your other skin layers from the outside environment and prevents injury and infection. It's also a place of constant overturn when it comes to skin cells. New skin cells are constantly forming while old, dead skin cells are constantly shedding. Keep in mind that our skin is sort of waterproof and sort of not. It's waterproof in the sense that water can't reach deep below our skin because the epidermis layer is there to protect it. The natural oil, also called sebum, on our skin also acts like a type of waterproofing. However, it's not perfectly waterproof in the sense that the skin cells on the surface can absorb a certain amount of water given enough time. Which brings us to the old, long-accepted theory of why our hands and feet get wrinkly after soaking in water. It begins with the knowledge that our hands and feet are areas of the epidermis with higher quantity of dead skin cells, also known as keratin. You can prove this to yourself by noticing that the skin on your heels is much thicker than the skin on your eyelids. Scientists thought if we were soaking in a tub, This thicker layer of dead skin cells was soaking up additional water and swelling as a part of the process called osmosis. With this swelling, the skin on our hands and feet would naturally wrinkle because it's expanding but still connected to the layers of the skin below. Here's a way to think about it. Imagine jumping into a bathtub with all your clothes on. The fabric of your clothes would soak up water and grow bigger and looser. On your same size body, now they're wrinkled. According to this osmosis theory, your water-soaked fingers and toes are doing a similar thing. It definitely sounds logical, and it's still a very popular idea. But now there's a new theory that seems to make more sense to scientists given the latest research. It's a theory that points to our body's automatic reflexes as being the reason for the wrinkling. In order to understand this theory, You should know your body has a set of instincts called the sympathetic nervous system. This system is responsible for things like your heart rate, breathing rate, sweating, and even the rate of your digestion. It might change any of these things under stress, oftentimes without you noticing, and definitely without you consciously thinking about them. So keeping that in mind, let's imagine the new theory. First, picture yourself soaking in the tub and playing with your rubber ducky for at least five minutes. The water washes away the oily sebum sitting on the surface of your skin. This gives the water a chance to seep down through the ducts into your sweat glands, tiny pockets that live in your dermis layer. You might remember the dermis layer is also home to your blood vessels, that system of tubes carrying blood throughout your entire body. Once water has reached down into your sweat glands, 
Your sympathetic nervous system reacts by contracting or squeezing your blood vessels down, so they're much narrower than normal. This reaction is called vasoconstriction. As the blood vessels narrow and become smaller, the actual size of your fingers and toes shrinks slightly too, leaving the topmost layer of your skin loose and wrinkly. So why would it be that this wrinkly business just happens in the hands and feet with this theory? Well, those areas of our body happen to have high concentration of sweat glands. The strongest evidence supporting this theory is that people who have nerve damage and a sympathetic nervous system that is not behaving normally won't get wrinkles on their hands and feet no matter how long they soak. This makes scientists pretty darn certain that the sympathetic nervous system is involved, and wrinkly toes are not just about dead skin cells expanding. Scientists are naturally curious people, so they are still trying to determine exactly why the sympathetic nervous system reacts this way. Some suspect it's because the balance of salt and other electrolytes living in our sweat glands have been disrupted by the water, while others believe that it's linked to a sudden overproduction of sweat. Either way, it's proof that the body is a pretty complicated system. There's also another fairly unanswered question out there regarding wrinkly toes and fingers. Does the body do this for a real purpose? Or is it just some sort of confused reaction? Scientists are still trying to determine the answer. Some are convinced that once upon a time as humans, we may have been trying to survive in very wet conditions. Wrinkly feet would have given us better balance on a wet, slippery surface, sort of like the tread on a tire gripping a wet road. And wrinkly fingers would have provided a better grip on slippery objects beneath the water. If our diet depended on what we could gather underwater, then the better our grip, the more food we would have been able to get our hands on. Basically, some believe wrinkly skin is an ancient reflex to a wet environment that never went away. And why doesn't our skin stay wrinkled out of the water? Likely because the body wants to return to tight, smooth skin that has better sensitivity on dry land. Others believe that there's not enough proof for this idea at all. They feel that wet, wrinkly skin is simply the body having an unusual, automatic response to being submerged in water. Regardless of the many questions we still have about our wet, wrinkly outsides, the skin itself is pretty darn amazing. As you dry off from your bath, you might want to take a moment to appreciate all the many things it does. As the largest organ in our body, it protects our insides from heat, light, injury, and infection. Our skin regulates our body temperature, prevents the entry of bacteria, stores water and fat for survival, and helps our body produce vitamin D in response to sunlight. Not to mention, it provides one of our five senses, touch. So wrinkly toes or not, be grateful for the skin you're in. Still fascinated by your wrinkly digits? Here are some more fun facts. It normally takes about five minutes underwater for your fingers and toes to begin to wrinkle. It turns out your skin will wrinkle faster in hot water than cold water. It will also wrinkle quicker in fresh water compared to salt water. Skin on the palms of our hands and the soles of our feet is referred to as glabrous skin, which is skin that is smooth and hairless. The sebum, or oil, on the surface of our skin is super important. It keeps our skin moist, lubricated, and fairly waterproof. Let's hear it for oily skin. There is one of the species besides humans that has been discovered to get wrinkly fingers and toes. It's the macaque a particular species of monkey living in various parts of Africa and Asia. Whether someone's toes or fingers wrinkle or not in response to being submerged in water is now officially being used as a medical test for nervous system function. One square inch of skin has on average 650 sweat glands, 1,000 nerve endings, and 20 blood vessels. After your bath, check out a few of these activities. The epidermis, even as thin as it is, can be broken down into many more distinct layers. Study up on the topmost layer of your skin. What are the names for these layers? How are they different? How are they the same? What is their purpose? 
create a large, colorful drawing of the epidermis with all of its layers carefully labeled, share with someone else fascinated by the skin they're in. Soak your feet in a small tub of water for at least 15 minutes. Pull them out and take a picture of the bottoms of both your feet in all their wrinkled glory. Now, study the pictures closely. What are your observations about the wrinkles? Do they have a pattern? Or do they seem completely random? Up close, what do they remind you of? Share your observations with a friend who would like to study your feet without necessarily smelling them. Do you know someone who works with feet? A physical therapist? A nurse? A pedicurist, a podiatrist, and a masseuse are all possibilities. Conduct a short interview with them and ask them what they know about the skin on one of the most important parts of our body, our feet. So there have been some possible answers as to why our fingers and toes wrinkle after a good soak. How about the changing color that can happen? Steady up on why our hands turn white after a long spell of washing dishes. Share the information with the parent that has put this on your list of chores. Read up on trench foot. It's a serious condition that occurs when the feet have been exposed to wet, cold, mucky conditions for too long. What are the symptoms? Can it be treated? How did it get its name? How is it linked to soldiers fighting in World War I? Speaking of tubs and wrinkly skin, track down some fun facts about bathtubs, their history, funny laws about bathing, etc. Share them with someone who loves a good soak. Still not ready to get out of the bathtub? I don't blame you, but while you're in there, maybe you could figure out the meaning of life and let me know what you come up with. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me and see you next time. 